Today we are going to discuss a very important problem solving tool that is a free body diagram. So as usual we will have a sample problem which is this which I will just explain in a moment and we'll, through that we will understand what is a free body diagram. Now the most important word in this three letter phrase is free. So let's underline it over here. So let's understand what's the relevance of this word. In this problem we have a relatively complex system. We have a ceiling which is rigid. We have one string. We have a mass or a body attached to it from which there is attached another string to which another body is attached. Now as you can see there's a this is a complex system and anal analyzing all of it together would be difficult. So using free body diagrams we take individual components that is this mass and this mass. We isolate them where isolate is the keyword. Analyze these smaller bits and then put it together to under understand the entire problem. So in this particular problem let me just so these two masses we already know what weight they have what mass they have how heavy they are and these two strings you want to know what is the tension in each of them so the first string has a tension of t1 that is how stretched how strongly stretched it is the second string has a tension of t2 why do we want to know this if we know these mass then we can understand what these tensions are and then we can actually design these strings so that they don't break so if these masses are say some weights that are being lifted by a crane then we can understand how thick the rope of the crane has to be. So now there are a few steps in taking making a free body diagram. The first step is to isolate the body that you want to analyze. So let us isolate body M2. How do we do this? We draw a boundary around M2. So I am drawing this boundary with the yellow marker. And what this boundary does is it contains M2 and only M2. There are no other bodies that it contains. This way I have isolated M2. Next what I do is I wherever there are bodies or objects or material passing through this boundary I just cut it over there. So I can see that this rope is passing through this boundary. So I just cut it over here. Any other ropes which had been passing that those would have been cut and then we just take this and draw this over here. So we just take M2 which has newly been isolated and draw this over here and then we draw all the forces which are acting on it. So since this is under a gravity force so there will be a downwards M2 G force over here. But now you will wonder that if we do cut this rope then M2 will just simply fall down. So this is the next concept that wherever you are cutting objects which are passing through the boundary of your isolation volume you have to replace or compensate for that material using additional forces. So in this case what we can understand is that there is an upward force in magnitude equal to T2 and we have to explicitly add this force to compensate for the lack of string which we just cut. Now this is your complete free body diagram. You have a body which has been isolated from the bigger system and all the forces which are acting on this body have been, have been written down. So you have M2G and you have T2. So now it's just a simple matter of doing a force balance. So we know that this one, if this is F1 and this is F2 then F1 is equal to minus M2G since gravity is acting in the downwards direction and F2 is equal to T2. Now from a simple force balance you know that F1 plus F2 is equal to 0. So T2 minus M2G is equal to 0 which gives us that T2 is equal to M2G. Now let us isolate M1G in a similar fashion. So let's bring this here. Again we'll take the yellow marker and we'll draw a boundary around M1. We cut any connections that are passing through this boundary. So one cut will be over here, one cut will be over here and after that we draw M1. What are the forces which are acting on M1? There is gravity. So that is M1G. You made one cut over here 
hence there will be a downward force of T2 which is the string tension and you made one cut over here which will create an upward force of T1 again which was the string tension this is 2 now again simple force balance so we take this as F1 we take this as F2 and we take this as F3 so F1 is equal to minus M1G F2 is equal to minus T2 and F3 is equal to T1 from simple force balance the sum of all these three should be equal to zero which gives T1 minus T2 minus M1G is equal to zero which gives T1 is equal to T2 plus M1G. Now we have previously solved for T2 which we know is equal to M2G. So we replace that value of T2 over here. So this gives us that T1 is equal to M2G plus M1G. So let's just recount what we have done. We have created a free body diagram which is created by a few steps. First, you create an isolation volume around the body that you want to isolate. Next, you draw that particular body. You add whatever forces were acting on the body, in this case gravity. And you add forces which have to compensate for the fact that we have created cuts in, in material because that material was passing through the isolation volume. So M2G was the original force which was acting because of gravity. And T2 is a force that we have to add because we have cut this string. After that, it's a force balance which you already know. And this is how we solve for a large system using free body diagrams. Please pause the screen to solve this question so that we can evaluate the efficiency of this video. This problem is just slightly more complicated than the problem which has been discussed in this video. The isolation volumes have been marked out in yellow for your convenience. As a hint, Regard these bodies as particles and not as bodies, that is, don't solve for torques or moments.